Hi everyone! In this tutorial, we'll explore the new eyelash content for Character Creator 5, focusing on how to effectively use eyelash morphs, materials, and positioning as the three key elements to improve layering and add more realism. First, let's take a look at the old eyelash system. You'll notice that some lashes disappear when viewed from certain camera angles, and overall the lashes appear flat and lack volume. That's because the old eyelashes were created using single pieces of geometry. When viewed from the side, the thin geometry becomes nearly invisible. The new eyelash system has made significant improvements for a more natural and layered appearance. It also includes additional content such as and decorative effects that can be applied. Let's start by dragging one of the new eyelash assets onto the character. You'll see that the eyelashes in the scene are now composed of multiple elements. When we enable wireframe mode, it becomes clear that both the upper and lower lashes are made up of several mesh pieces stacked together. This creates a more dimensional, layered effect and solves the issue of disappearing lashes at sharp viewing angles. They also conform realistically to a wide range of eye animation. In addition to the full sets, the updated system includes a variety of eyelash parts such as separate upper and lower lashes and decorative accessories. Each part comes with a variety of pairing options. Let's apply a set of eyelashes. Now you'll see that we have the option to either replace or add. In this case, we choose add. Below that, we'll get further options. Keep morph, add morph, or replace morph. For now, let's select Replace to overwrite the original morphs and click Apply to see the new lashes added. Next, let's increase the eyelash density. We'll continue using the Add option, but this time select Keep Morph to preserve the previous morph settings. We'll repeat the same steps for the lower lashes. Remember, you can keep track of all eyelash components using the Scene Manager and use Hide or Delete to manage or fix individual parts. Finally, let's add an accessory. Since there are currently no accessories applied, the only available option is to add. Again, we'll choose Keep Morph to retain our existing eyelash shape. Rotate the camera to see the accessory attached to the lower lashes. Let's now move on to the eyelash morphs. We'll apply purple to the top lashes and yellow to the bottom row. The corresponding morph sliders for these lashes will appear in the morph panel. As before, we can stack additional lashes, but this time we'll select the add morph option. We'll add another layer to the upper and lower lashes and use blue and green to highlight the new additions. Once the morph is applied, you'll see a total of four different morph sliders in current used. Notice how the yellow regions indicate the current eyelash shapes. These can be adjusted using the morph sliders. Now that we have separate sliders for the upper and lower lashes, we can customize each one individually. You'll clearly see the difference before and after the adjustments. In addition to the upper and lower morph sliders, the original morph sliders can still be used. You can also make further refinements using the headshot slider. Finally, if we use the morph sliders to adjust the character's facial structure, the eyelashes will continue to follow the contours of the eyelids. Even when changing eye size, the eyelashes will adapt and align with the new eyeline shapes. Now let's move on to the eyelash materials, which use the digital human hair shader, offering a wide range of adjustment options. First, we can fine tune the root and end colors of the eyelashes. Typically, the end color is slightly lighter and the root slightly darker. Here, we can adjust both ends independently or even swap the colors for a different effect. 
Next, under the highlight settings, we can choose a brighter color by adjusting the color intensity and its effective range. We can also modify the roughness and specular values to control how reflective the eyelashes appear. The specular direction setting allows us to tweak the direction and flow of the eyelash glossiness. The makeup section offers another layer of customization. These settings provide deeper, more exaggerated colors, allowing the eyelashes to appear more vibrant with enhanced reflectivity. If the character is an elderly person, we can change the eyelash color to a grayish white that fits the age and appearance. Additional highlights and adjustments to the specular radiance angle can further refine the look to suit the character. By adding lashes, adjusting their morph sliders, and customizing their colors, we can achieve a result that is highly detailed and perfectly tailored to the character's overall appearance. Now let's move on to adjusting the positions of the individual eyelash geometry pieces. In many cases, third-party applications are used to refine the character's model. Here we'll demonstrate this process using ZBrush. Since we're only editing the shape of the character and not its textures, we'll export just the mesh to ZBrush using GoZi. Once in ZBrush, we can begin sculpting the geometry. In this example, we'll enlarge the eyes to give the character a more cartoon-like appearance. At this stage, we'll leave the eyelashes untouched. After making our edits, we can send the model back to the character creator for updates. Back in character creator, you'll notice that the eyelashes no longer align with the newly enlarged eyelids. To examine this more clearly, we'll disable eyelash transparency. You'll see that the eyelash mesh has deviated from the eye mesh it was originally attached to. To fix this, go to Character Correct Position, which will automatically realign the eyelashes. You can also select specific parts for alignment in the section above. Below that, you'll find the Root and Full Positioning options. The default is set to Full, which moves the entire eyelash mesh to match the updated positioning, but it may slightly alter the overall shape. Switching to root preserves the original eyelash shape and only stretches the base to match the new eyelid contours. In another example, the difference in eyelash shape and positioning becomes more noticeable, especially when using the full option, which adjusts the entire eyelash. In contrast, the root option preserves the original eyelash shape while only attaching the root area. Based on these differences, you can choose the method that best suits your needs. Next, we'll use the correct position feature to adjust how the eyelashes respond to facial expressions. For example, when the eyes blink, the eyelashes should naturally tilt downward. In edit expression mode, we'll select the eye blink slider and click the correct position button to activate adjustment regions and correct the eyelash angle. Finally, click update to save the changes to the morph slider. Repeat the same process for the eyelashes on the opposite side using the parts and angles and settings to make the necessary adjustments. This ensures that the eyelashes now follow the eyelid movement more naturally when the eyes close. Finally, let's go over custom positioning. Previously, we focused on using the default positioning, but there's also an option to define your own. Under Character Correct Position, you'll find the Set Custom Position function. Once enabled, the custom option below will become active, indicating that the current eyelash positions have been saved as a custom state. Now let's say you'd adjust the character's eye shape again in ZBrush and send it back to Character Creator using GoZ. You may notice that the eyelashes are once again out of alignment. Click the Correct Position button and choose Root to preserve the shape of the eyelashes while reattaching them to the face. In addition to the more detailed physique of the new generation CC5 character base, the revamped eyelashes add volume, definition, and style that complement the overall character design, further elevating the character's visual quality. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.